and welcome to Seen Through Glass. That is the all new Land Rover Defender. And let's cut to the chase. I really don't like the way it looks. In fact, I don't really like what it represents. Important to say that I've always been a fan of, of the original Defender. My dad's always had them, used them as kind of family runarounds. And in fact, I actually used one as my personal car for about 18 months in my early 20s. So I was pretty gutted when Land Rover said that they're gonna be ceasing production of the Defender after nearly 70 years back in 2016. However, my disappointment was short lived because rumors began to swirl that Land Rover would be bringing the Defender back with an all new car and if you look at what Mercedes did with the G-Wagon and more recently Ford did with the Bronco they took their sort of most iconic off-roaders and, and kept so many important elements and characteristics but brought the underpinnings up to 21st century standards and, and that's what I thought Land Rover were going to do but they brought out this brick. <laughs> to me, this is way more discovery than Defender. And I'm sure if the designer was here, he'd be telling me about all the sort of original Defender elements he'd incorporated into the design, but I, I, I just don't see it. And also, in my mind, Defender was always a, a car of the people, but this is now insanely expensive. This is a 110S, which is the longer of the new Defenders. You can also get a 90, which is a shorter wheelbase, but S is basically entry-level spec. This car does have a couple of options on it, and that means the price is 50 to 55 grand. If you want to go crazy you can tick all the boxes and you can spend 80 grand on a Defender. However these were pretty much all of my opinions before today because this car has very kindly been lent to me by Lookers Land Rover West London. I filmed there loads of different times and in fact the guys have very nearly sold me an F-Type SVR but I, I, I just sort of seem to get nervous and bail out at the last minute so sorry Lookers West London but yes they've known how I felt about this new Defender since it launched so when they got their demonstrator they said well Sam why don't you come down and drive it and see if the car changes your mind and, and on the drive here to the Cotswolds I'm not sure it's changed my mind but a few things. Firstly, I think Land Rover are a bit cleverer than I perhaps gave them credit for. Secondly, I'm starting to sort of realize the potential of this thing. And thirdly, I think this still has a place in the Land Rover lineup. We'll kick things off here in the cabin because in my mind, if you can get in here, this is where things start to get a little bit better. And I say, if you can get in here because this car is huge. I feel like I need to do sort of a running jump to get in the driver's seat. I'm not even exaggerating. It's more like a van or an American truck. I think my nearest comparison is probably a Ford F-150 out in California. It's just, it's just ginormous. Anyway, um, it's kind of interesting because in here there's, there's lots of sort of hints towards old Defender. There's some interesting design elements. But then there's also some sort of juxtapositions. That's a, it's a big word, isn't it? But it's, it's sort of like a grand designs episode where you see the architects sort of talking about all these new age spaces and components and you're like, oh, I'm not sure that's going to work. And then when it kind of zooms out at the end, you go, ah, that's kind of cool. There are kind of gaps everywhere, you know, big holes. And it's all sort of nice, rugged materials, which is quite nice. And, and everything sort of, oh, you know, you feel like you could kind of bash it around. But then on the flip side of that, you've got the latest Jaguar Land Rover infotainment system. So amazing sat-nav and surround cameras and all these different sort of elements, which definitely never appeared on the old Defender. I mean, we've got a sound system that actually works. Something else never appeared on old Defender. So it's sort of a bit like, OK, it's, it's brutal, it's rugged, it's hardcore, but actually really nice. <laughs> so I can't quite figure that out. But as I say, the, the, the most impressive thing or the most pleasing element is sort of how sturdy it all feels. It all feels like it could take quite a good bashing. So what's it actually like to drive this new Defender? Well, it's night and day from the old Defender, and I think that has to be seen as a good thing because the old Defender really was crap to drive. It was very functional, but just awful to drive. So, so any improvement on that will be pretty huge. But in my mind, the Defender needs to really be able to do two things. Go really well off-road, or at least in sort of muddy, loose conditions, and be able to tow things. Now, unfortunately, as I mentioned, this is a demonstrator, so I'm not gonna start thrashing it off-road, and I've, I've got nothing to tow, but, based on the kind of launch videos and other press reviews, it suggests that, that this car is very capable. And, and really, as sort of Land Rover's rivals have slightly overtaken it, I think in some areas, 
no one's ever really been able to knock their off-road skills. So yes, if you are planning to use this car in the Moab deserts of, where is the, Utah? Sorry, my geography just got a bit lost. Or the Scottish Highlands or whatever, I think you'll be fine. But will you want to? That's what I'm going to come on to in a second. But just to recap, we're currently in a petrol Defender. There are diesel engines available and there is a rumour of an upcoming SVR, but that all seems a bit silly because you just want to poodle along. You need plenty of torque, I guess, to do the off-roading or the towing, but I, there's absolutely nothing about me that wants to drive this fast. Also, because you're so high up, I feel like if I do start driving it fast, I run the risk of rolling over. I'm sure physically I won't, but it just, I feel like I'm going to topple over. But yes, would you want to thrash this thing around? Because that's where the price starts to come into things and actually the overall design language, because would you want to sort of trash this thing? One of the beauties about the original Defender is you could just kind of beat it up and it would just take it. It was so durable. And of course, the value of the used ones kind of played a part in that. You weren't always spending huge amounts of money, but you just kind of knew it could take the brutality. And whilst this does still have that kind of rugged interior, like I mentioned, it's a bit similar to the sort of rest of the Land Rover lineup and, and therefore it's a bit too nice to kind of treat badly. I used to park my old family Defender in like hedges and things and be like, oh, I'll be fine there. This, I kind of want to park it nicely, make sure no one comes along and dings the door. I actually think the perfect clientele for this car is a young family because of all these kind of interior elements and grab handles and things like that. You could have kids kind of go crazy in here and, and not really destroy too much. I've got Twiggy, my puppy, with me today and I'm not nervous leaving her in the cabin because there's not really much she can chew or destroy. I, I do worry about these lovely screens getting damaged, but apart from that, it's sort of good. So that, I, I reckon young parents with young kids, this is kind of the perfect car for you. But people who actually want to go and do that kind of exploring and live that kind of utilitarian, off-radar life, I think this is just too much. And that's where I feel like this Defender's let me down personally. And that's where I say it's sort of, I don't really like what it represents, the sort of idea of it, because it's gone away from what Defender used to do. It's actually much better than I expected. And in the Cotswolds around beautiful scenery, like it feels cool. And yeah, I mean, the, the road presence of it, as I mentioned, is, is insane. But it's not, not really a Defender. I think they should have given it a different name. And I reckon instead of farmers and adventurers and explorers, young families and yummy mummies are going to be the biggest customers of this car. To kind of see if I'm right, to try and prove my own point, I'm headed to Dalesford. Yes, my favourite organic farm cafe. I mean, any excuse to come here and yeah, I'll, I'll take it. But I feel like in years to come, this is where we're going to see the majority of these new defenders. Kind of yuppie country folk who kind of want to hint towards the fact that they're a bit out there. You know, I just, sometimes I like to drive down a green lane just to kind of feel alive. But actually I do also want an oat milk latte. I mean, it's essentially me, <laughs> fundamentally. But yes, I think we're gonna see them there and on the King's Road in Chelsea, London, rather than in Cornwall, down a muddy lane covered in crap. I could be wrong but let's head to Dalesford so I can get one of those lovely oat milk lattes. Check out kind of if this car fits in as much as I think it will. Yes, I would say that Defender definitely looked at home at Dalesford. I'm a little bit confused by this car. The more time I spend around it, the more I kind of enjoy it for what it is. I think maybe I was too hung up on old Defender to openly accept this car. I'm starting to even think it's quite good looking from certain angles, but it's definitely got its place and it's definitely an interesting proposal. As I say, if it was a, a bit smaller, and a bit cheaper, I think I'd be intrigued in, in a sort of, as a rival to my X3. It's not really sort of an equivalent powerful engine in this yet, but as I kind of mentioned, I don't feel like I needed a powerful engine. It's definitely got something, it's got a persona about it, 
And in that car park at Tailsford, next to Range Rover Sports and Range Rover Vogues, this did look a bit different. It stood out. It didn't sort of blend in as much as I thought. People were noticing it. Hard to capture that on camera without getting sort of sued by people for invasion of privacy. But people were definitely going, oh, that's the new Defender. So it's eye-catching, good or bad. Let me know below. What are your thoughts? Kind of from the outside, if you've experienced it or not experienced it, what do you think about this new Defender? Because I do think it has split minds or it's a Marmite car. People can't decide whether they love it or hate it, but I'm giving it a second chance now, or at least I'm giving it a new lease of life in my mind. Having previously written it off, called it a bit of a joke. <laughs> I'm not like, oh, you know what? I get it. And I wouldn't mind having one of these as a support vehicle for a longer trip or taking one of these on a bit of a sort of longer, more rugged trip. Imagine vlog South America, whenever I can do that, basically the extension to drive the world in one of these, fully kitted out. As long as Land Rover pay for it, I'll be on board. Anyway, I have to say a massive thanks to Lucas West London for lending me the car. If you are looking for a Defender yourself, give them a call. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come.